Now let's quickly look into some important radiographs. The first one, where do we get a occipital frontal view? Occipital frontal view, this is the Caldwell view. And what is this Caldwell view used for? We all know this is for frontal sinus. An occipital mental view with closed mouth is called as water's view. And what do we use water's view for? Water's view is for maxillary sinus. And also orbital floor. To look at orbital floor also, we go for water's view. And same occipital mental view, but with an open mouth. This is called as Perry's view. Remember P, P, right? So open mouth is Perry's view. And this is showing you a part of the maxillary and sphenoid. And remember all the sinuses, part of all the sinuses can be seen. on lateral skull radiograph and the lateral skull x-ray is also the best to look at the cella tersica okay to look at cella also the best is lateral skull x-ray right this is the lateral skull x-ray that we have now please look at this positioning what is this position this is a occipital mental the chin is touching the mentum is touching the flim. So, this is an occipital mental view with a closed mouth, right? This is how you would have your water view. And here, this is occipital frontal view, and this is the Caldwell view. So, if the chin is touching the flim, that is your water view. If the frontal bone is touching the flim, that is your occipital frontal view that is the Caldwell view and looking at this skull radiograph how do we tell is it a water's view or is it a Caldwell view if it is water's view the petrous ridge this bony ridge is the petrous ridge the petrous ridge is below the maxillary antrum so you can see these are the maxillary antrum and the petrous ridge is seen below the maxillary antrum this is water's view so in water's view the petrous ridge will be seen below the maxillary antrum and in a Caldwell view the petrous ridge will be below the orbit overlapping the maxillary antrum. So, you cannot comment on the maxillary sinus, you can only look at the frontal sinus. This is what is your Caldwell view. So, if the petrous ridge is below the orbit overlapping the maxillary antrum, that is the Caldwell view, right? And if it is seen below the maxillary antrum, that is your water's view. Now, what is a Schuller's view? In Schuller's view, the skull is placed like this in contact with the radiographic plate and the X-ray beam is given from, you know, in an angle forming 30 degrees with the baseline and this would be what is called as a Schuller's view. This will go along the mastoid air cells. So, to look at the mastoid for mastoid air cells, this positioning of the skull and the X-ray beam going with a 30 degree angle to look at the mastoids, that is called as a Schuller's view. And a town's view is actually anterior posterior view of the skull with a 30 degree angle with the baseline. So, here also you have a 30 degree angle, but this is an AP view of the skull. And this also tries to look at the mastoid antrum and the internoidary meatus. So, this is town's view, AP view of the skull with 30 degree angle. This can show you the mastoid air cells, the part of foramen magnum and the internoidary meatus. So, this is for mastoid foramen magnum. and a part of interoitary meatus. This can be seen by town's view. Now, look at this radiograph. In this radiograph, what do you see here? You can see that the tip of the endotracheal tube is going into the right main bronchus, aerating the right lung, but not aerating the left lung. So, this is a faulty insertion of the endotracheal tube. Normally, the endotracheal tube should be 5 centimeters above the carina. But if you see oh, the tip of the tracheal tube going to one of the main bronchus, that is a faulty insertion. And what are these? These are your ECG leads. These are the ECG leads that you have. And what is this image showing you? This chest radiograph taken from a neonate with frothing is showing this coiling of nasogastric tube. So, if you see coiling of nasogastric tube, this is suggestive of tracheoesophageal fistula. And you can see there is gas in the abdomen because it is a distal type. So, when the lower part of the esophagus, imagine this is the trachea 
and this is the esophagus. If the upper part is atretic and lower part is connected to the trachea, this is a distal tracheal fistula. So the gas will come into the abdomen, but when you are trying to pass a nasogastric tube, it will show coiling. So coiling of nasogastric tube and gas in the abdomen. This is a distal of tracheoesophageal fistula. And you can see here, there is a prosthetic heart wall and it is below this imaginary line drawn from the left hilum to the right cardiophrenic angle, from the left auricle to the right cardiophrenic angle when you draw this imaginary line from the left auricle just below the left hilum till the right cardiophrenic angle. This imaginary line is drawn and you can see the valve located below this imaginary line. So what is this? This is a prosthetic mitral wall, prosthetic mitral wall. If it is above that imaginary line, that would be aortic wall. So if it would be above this, this would be aortic wall and if it is below it, it is a mitral wall. That is how you identify the prosthetic heart walls. And is it a cardiac pacemaker or ICD? Look at the electrodes. If you see two thin electrodes with their tips, one in the right atrium and one in the right ventricle. So you see two thin electrodes. In right atrium and right ventricle, that is a cardiac pacemaker. Please remember to know the integrity of cardiac pacemakers. Whether the electrodes are correctly placed or are they broken, the radiograph is the investigation of choice. What is contraindicated? MRI is absolute contraindication, right? For cardiac pacemakers on ICD devices. And how do you identify an ICD device? Implantable cardioverter defibrillator or ICD device. This will have a single lead with thick coils. If you see such thick coils, this is an ICD lead. Okay, so if you see a single lead with thick coils, that is your ICD implantable cardioverter defibrillator. If you see two thin electrodes, that would be cardiac pacemaker. Thin uh, electrodes is cardiac pacemaker, thick coils is your ICD. And look at this chest photograph. In this chest photograph, you can see this is the breast shadow. This is the breast shadow you are seeing on the right side. But you are not seeing the breast shadow on the left side. This must be left sided mastectomy or a Poland syndrome. And what is Poland syndrome? A mastia with absent pectoral muscles. A mastia and absent pectoral muscle. This is Poland syndrome. And what is this image showing you? In this image, you can see there is a popcorn appearance on mammography. A popcorn appearance on mammography, this is a fibroadenoma. Involuted fibroadenoma will show you this popcorn appearance. And popcorn appearance on mammography, this is by rats too. Uh, involuted fibroadenoma, this is popcorn appearance, this is by rats too. A popcorn appearance on chest radiograph, this is seen with pulmonary hematoma. And where do you see a popcorn appearance on MRI brain? This is seen with cavernous angioma. And if you are given a popcorn appearance on the pelvic bone, the iliac bone here, you can see this popcorn appearance. A popcorn appearance on iliac bone, this is chondrosarcoma. And if you are given a postmenopausal female with chronic pelvic pain showing this popcorn like calcification in the pelvic radiograph, also keep calcified fibroid in your differentials. So calcified fibroid, right? This will be in postmenopausal female chronic pelvic pain. This is popcorn appearance on the pelvic radiograph. Can also show you this popcorn calcification during the degenerations of the fibroid. So popcorn calcification, postmenopausal female, chronic pelvic pain in the region of the uterus. If you see this popcorn calcification, think of calcified fibroid also.